In this episode, I want to show you how my team and I automated a whole day's worth of work. Exactly 1,440 minutes worth of work. That is 1,440 minutes, which is one whole day's worth of work. We automated all of it in under 90 days. And I'm going to give you the strategy, the tactics, and the exact tool on how we did that. And it all starts right now. One thing is for certain, just because it's tried and true doesn't mean it's working right now. So the big question is this, where can you learn what is working right now? The strategies, the tactics, the psychology, and the exact how to, how to grow your business, how to blow up your personal brand and supercharge your personal growth. That is the question. And this podcast will give you the answer. My name is Sharon Srivatsa and welcome to Business School. I get a lot of feedback from entrepreneurs and business owners around the world who go through my productivity playbook program. And it is the kind of the no BS guide of lessons that I've learned over the last 20 years that I teach to the CEOs that I mentor and the, the entrepreneurs in my mastermind group on how to get more done while working less. And the reason I'm sharing this is the program is structured in a 21 day challenge framework. And during that challenge process, I get a lot of feedback on how things are going in the program, where people are stuck, the, uh, the breakthrough that they get, et cetera. And one of the core modules that people always talk to me about every single time, <laughs> every single time is this one module, which I believe, I wish I had known many, many years ago. And it is this idea of reporting first reporting first. And what I mean by that is a lot of times what we'll do as entrepreneurs, business owners, coaches, consultants, sales professionals, is that we will go out and do the work. And then after we've done the work for uh, 30 days, three months, six months, nine months, three years, 10 years, we will step back and say something like, huh, maybe I should like do some reporting, build a dashboard on where I'm spending my time, how much money I'm making, where my revenue is coming from, et cetera. And what I suggest is that you build the dashboard first, because when you have a goal, say you want to do a certain amount of activities, maybe you're spending a amount on Facebook ads, or you're doing some cold calls or generating some leads, and then you're working on some way of converting those leads, and then you're generating appointments, and then those appointments are showing up to contracts, and those contracts are showing up into delivery, and then you're actually getting paid, there is a flow there. And so my suggestion always is, is to build that dashboard first. And as the days go by and you start inputting the activities, you start to see your dashboard come to life. And it's a very powerful thing. And people always like will write in and ask me, Sean, I kind of understand what you're saying, but how do I build this dashboard? And they think that there has to be this dashboard, which is uh, ultra powerful, ultra beautiful. They want to pay, you know, $500,000, $10,000 to go get dashboard reporting software. And in fact, you don't need to do any of that. Even on our team, when we do our day-to-day reporting, our dashboard, I'll actually tell you up until six months ago, our dashboard was really, really simple. We tracked about six numbers every single day. And here's what our teams would do. Uh, Different people on the team had different access or, or different controls where they would pay attention to each of these numbers. So all of the team members uh, the morning of would get the numbers ready for the neighbor day before and they would all hand it to my operations person. My operations person would scrub all those numbers and crunch the model, put it in the spreadsheet, take those numbers out and she would post it in our dashboard Slack channel, right? And if you're not familiar with Slack, whatever, it's just a group communication software and she would post the numbers of the day in our dashboard Slack channel and it would just look it would just say today's dashboard and it would have the f- six numbers in them. And then tomorrow it would just have the next six numbers in them. So you can kind of see that. Yes, there was a spreadsheet tracking it, but we would just use the same six numbers because it would give us a pulse of where things were. Now we've built this dashboard over time and we just realized that we like operating from these six numbers. And here's the interesting thing that happened, which is the story I want to tell today. Um, what at the Uh, One of the things that we did in our 90 day planning meeting with our team was I said, well, what is something that we're all doing that takes a lot of time? 
And every single person said, man, our dashboard creation, our reporting takes a lot of time for those six numbers. And I asked them to walk me through it. And when I saw the team walking me through everything that they were doing to put these, this dashboard together, these six numbers together, it blew my mind. And, and I should have known better. I thought that, hey, as long as I get those six numbers, I get to make decisions well. That is what a average CEO will do. They will say, oh, you know what? Yeah, totally. As long as I get these six numbers and daily and I get it on my on my terms and I get to make these six on these decisions based on these numbers, I don't really care how these numbers show up. I don't really care how much man hours, technology, uh, patience, frustration it took to put this together. That's what the average CEO would do. And that's what I did. I was that person. And then I realized, you know what? There's probably a better way. So the team and I brainstormed in our 90 day plan on how we can do better, how we can actually create this dashboard better. And I'm sharing this project with you because this is what turned into something really amazing. So as I walk you through this, kind of walk down this journey with me. So um, the team started to say, hey, well, let's, let's take on this active idea of collaborating and um, you know, spending some time automating this dashboard creation process. So what we did is we put a call on the calendar every single day for 15 minutes and for the, you know, and we wanted to just automate this dashboard creation process and see what it took and how it was crunched and all of that stuff. Right. And we, we said, we just devote 15 minutes a day to doing it. So in our first week, after we automated our dashboard creation process. Now, it didn't get completely automated in the first week, but it was significantly better because we were all getting on a Zoom call and like working on how to automate this dashboard. And after we automated it, it, the team was like, this is amazing. There's so much efficiency, right? It makes sense. There's so much efficiency. And that's when one of our team members said something which kind of blew my mind. And one of our team members said, well, you guys are missing a point. Yes, it's taking us less time to do this. Yes, it's a lot easier. Yes, we it saves us all, all of us 20 minutes every morning. So if you take the entire team, that's like multiple hours. Yes, but this team member's entire job was making sure to double check the numbers so that we were not operating on wrong data, right? So she said, Sharon, you won't believe this, but the automation is not just about the efficiency, it's about the accuracy. That's where the benefits came from. I hadn't have to go back and stress out about we were about having wrong numbers because there was no human error involved. And that's what I want to start with with you right now. Amateurs automate for efficiency. Professionals automate for accuracy. I'll say it again. Amateurs automate for efficiency. Professionals automate for accuracy. Now, you will hear things out there like authentic automation and things like that. Like, literally, that stuff doesn't make any sense. How does how do you authentically automate something? That's, yeah, but but it's still, it's still uh, wrong. <laughs> like, if you're automating messages, it shouldn't come across like it was real. Like, that's not good. Yeah, if, if it's, if it's, if it's real, it's real. But I'm not going down that path. I want to show you the power of something completely different today. And I want you to remember this quote. Amateurs automate for efficiency. Professionals automate for accuracy, right? And the accuracy is what we're thinking about. And I always talk about it in my productivity playbook program. And I say, you know, it's about getting more done. More done. It's not just, it's about getting more it's about getting more done, more done. Done is, 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 is the completion, is the accuracy. More is the efficiency. More done. They're, they're two sides of the same coin. So I want you to realize that. Uh, by the way, if you're interested in the Productivity Playbook program, uh, go to productivityplaybook.info and uh, you will see the entire story behind it and, and you can uh, jump on it if you'd like and take the 21 day challenge. Again, it's productivityplaybook.info and I'll link it up in the show notes as well if you are interested in this. But that is the impetus for this episode. Now, let me take you to the next step of this process. After we realized that it was not about the efficiency but the accuracy, we made a goal. We made a 90 day goal and we said, well, this is, I, I was probably drinking too much eggnog. Uh, when this happened. But I said, well, what if we could automate an entire day? And they said, what do you mean, Sharon? I said, well, what if we had an eight-day week? (laughs) 
what if we had an eight day week? And they're like, what are you talking about? I said, wouldn't it be amazing if we had, if we worked together for 90 days and we created the right amount of automations into our system, into our infrastructure, where we were able to, uh, you know, data driven way show that we have automated an entire day, <laughs> an entire day, 24 hours, an entire day. And now the question became, well, everyone was like, well, Sharon, we have automations. We have automations with direct messages. We have automations with email. We have automation. We have amazing automations that runs at our CRM that we build. We have automations, you know, with, uh, with Calendly. We have automations with our billing systems. We have automations with our, uh, you know, all, like whatever. So many other things that, and I said, well, yeah, but for this one, we're going to track it. You're welcome to pull, we're going to track it. We don't care about what we have. We're only going to talk about what we are going to build. We're going to build an eight-day week. We're going to build an extra day that is completely automated. Think about that for a second. We're going to build an extra day. So I'm not even giving them credit for all that we've already built. We're going to build a new set of automations to give ourselves one extra day. And I said, I told them that if they realize the power behind this, they could take this skill and this capability forever with them wherever they went in their life. And that's what I want to share with you today because it is so powerful. And now I'm not going to go into the details of exactly what we automated, but I'll give you the high level and how we did it and the philosophy behind it. So you can maybe consider doing this for yourself or it will change the way you think about the world and give you a systems-based approach to thinking. I'm not trying to tell you to automate more because people will say things like, well, if I automate more, do I actually get more business? No, 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 this is not about that. But I will tell you how amazing would it be how amazing does my team feel when I told them that when, when we told each other that we were going to automate a whole day together as a team and create an eight day week? All right. So here's how this works. Uh, first, we were like, well, how do we track it? <laughs> how do we track it? Now, everybody is like, well, if we automate this, it'll save us three hours. If we automate this, it'll save us two minutes. And we decided to come up with a um, baseline measurement for tracking this eight day week right? This, this extra day of the week. So here's how we decided to track it. We decided to use Zapier. Now, many of you may or may not know what Zapier is. Zapier is just a tool on the internet that allows you to connect two systems because we realized that we were using multiple systems and we were connecting them either uh, haphazardly or with, uh, with manually or uh, not in a most, not in a thoughtful way or, because we had not put focus around it. And we were doing it. We have, I have a pretty efficient team, probably you know, 10 times more efficient than the average team out there because I'm the ninja and I, I like this stuff. But we said, well, let's use Zapier. And Zapier is the glue of the internet. And every time you run a task in Zapier, what it means is that if it says, hey, when this happens, do this. And that's one task in Zapier. So we said, okay, what if we agreed that each task would roughly take a human one minute to do? And some, in, in, in all honesty, some tasks take more than one minute, some tasks take less. So we agreed that on average, if we had to go log into a system, put in an email address, click a button, transfer that over, you know, just the, the, the separation from what we're doing to something else took a minute. So we said, all right, we're going to use Zapier as our tracker because it's the universal tracker for us. And we said every task that we use in Zapier that we set that runs for that month, will save us one minute because if, if Zapier didn't do it, then we would have to do it ourselves. Cool. So by that rationale, we had to do uh, a lot of minutes, right? So if you took um, 24 hours a day, 24 hours a, a day, 24 hours a day is uh, times minute, times 60 minutes is 1440 minutes, 1440 minutes. Right. And so our job was to get to automating 1440 minutes per week. All right. Our job was to auto getting to automate 1440 minutes per week. And if you think about it, that's a lot, right? That's a lot. Um, so our team got to work and you'd be shocked as to kind of what we did. Um, and the reason I'm suggesting this to you is every week, if you actually click this little checkbox in the Zapier backend, it will send you a report uh, every week saying, hey, this week we ran 87 tasks, 92 tasks, 300 tasks, whatever. My job, all I wanted to see was that that report that said this week we ran 
1,440 tasks. Because if that happened, that means we had created an eight day week. We had created an extra week that we had just done in automation. So today I wanna walk you through the exact order of the five projects that we took on in a sequential way where the team um, and I worked to automate a bunch of things. So let me just high level give you what we did and um, how it may how it may kind of help you. So the first thing that we did is we automated our daily dashboard creation. Um, several of the tools that we used in this process was we used Stripe for our billing infrastructure. We used SamCart, which is a front facing lead uh, kind of checkout page creation tool on the front end. Uh, we, you know, we run a lot of Facebook ads and uh, buy media on, on Facebook and Google. So we have those uh, tools in there. We consolidate all of it into a Google sheet because we run uh, several formulas and things like that associated with that. And then we use Slack for reporting. And so we needed to have all those tools automatically like work together and integrate together and talk to each other. Um, so I'll tell you how literally this works. So uh, this may almost be a, a one day workshop, but how we did it was we set up a separate tab in our Google Sheet spreadsheet that we called our, our daily dashboard, right? And every single day, we would, uh, we, all these services, Stripe, SamCard, Facebook, whatever, would drop one of its data points in into one row of that Google Sheet. So every single day had a row and all the stats we were tracking for the math, et cetera, had a column. So literally every single day, all we did is we worked on figuring out if we could automate the daily data to dump into that one single row. And our, our dashboard was not based just on that. Our dashboard was based on rolling six month trends. Our dashboard based on a bunch of averages and all of that. So the daily data was not just the issue. We needed the daily data along with the historical data to actually make the adjustments and the analysis. So we started putting in one row for every single date. Right. And that actually took us a week or so to do. And once we did that, we were like, cool, we have this big data repository. And every single day, automatically, the data would get put in that row. And then we started building formulas and things out of that. Now, the cool part was it didn't matter every time that the next day happened, that one row would get generated and our dashboard would automatically update. And based on that dashboard updating on one of the other tabs, we could consolidate some numbers and automatically fire a message into Slack. Uh, that way there was no change in how our team worked to it. So first project that we did was we automated, automated our daily dashboard creation internally, uh, which is amazing. Number two, uh, we have a lot of client onboarding and offboarding stuff and off, we don't actually have a lot of offboarding, but it's like, you know, sometimes when we want to remove access, take away access, add something, et cetera. And the team was doing a lot of this, uh, because it was not often the team was doing some of this manually. But the interesting part is because it was not often, they were actually, uh, not as fast doing it. <laughs> so it would take them a significant amount of time. So we our CRM that we use at this point is we use a CRM called Active Campaign, and it has a lot of automation tools built into it. So we used the connection between Active Campaign and Zapier again because we we're tracking Zaps, we're tracking the tasks, and we said, well, how do we automate, you know, client onboarding and client offboarding? And we use a uh, for 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 fancy technology technology folks here, we used a we used a lot of webhooks, and the idea was that's how Active Campaign would talk to Zapier, Zapier would talk to Active Campaign. And we were able to automate a lot of things. Now on my team, um, you know, we only use like six or seven tools and everyone is required to know how every tool works. So it's not like when someone comes in and say, Oh my gosh, like, you know, uh, that automation and email broke. We need, you know, we need Jimmy to fix it. Well, no, everybody knows how to use every tool. And the way they do that is every single, uh, even though it's one person's job every single day, Every single person on the team is required to at least watch one uh, support or instructional video on one of the many tools that we use. So even I, for example, if you, if you, I have to do this too. So over the last three years, two and a half years, I've probably watched every single video that is available, help video or tutorial video 
that is available on our CRM. I literally know everything to do. I, I'm probably better at using the CRM than the creators of the CRM because I use it live every single day. And I've used, I've looked at all their vid, all their tutorial videos. But when you have every single team member up to speed on every single tool, you don't have any kind of like, yeah, one may be better than the other, but the baseline knowledge exists on how things work, right? So the second thing that we tackled was client onboarding and offboarding. Even if it was just checklist creation, we just, you know, you would click a button, the checklist would create in Trello, it would assign the right task and the right people would do it, but it made sure things got done in a much cleaner way. Again, thinking about accuracy as well as efficiency. So number two, client onboarding and offboarding. Number three, doing this right now, podcast management. Um, we, how I manage this uh, podcast with my team is I don't do a lot of work. My job is to be the talent. I show up, I do the interview or the episode, I you know record it and I'm done. And the team takes over from there, right? And so literally my entire job is to do three things. Number one, record the episode or the interview. Number two, record the intro when that's done. And number three, give the episode a title. Literally, I do nothing else. Those are the only three things. That is my only job. So as soon as I've done recording the episode, I will go back and record the intro because I have understanding of what that episode was. And then I give it a title and I hit a button and the team gets it and I'm done. But I didn't realize how much pain there was on the back end. So I worked with the team on this and we use Trello for our process and we kind of uh, worked through that and how we actually not only put it all together internally and how we promote it and the whole setup takes a minute, takes, takes a minute to do. And we completely dialed that process in. Now, is that perfect yet? No, not exactly the way I want it. But I, at some point, I think I can do a course or a training where I can show you how we do it, where just moving cards on a Trello board just fires all these automations and it, it removes the pain of the process and it makes doing podcasting, it makes doing content creation extremely joyful because you get to do what you get to do best and the systems do what systems do best. Now, my point around all this is I want to give you the, uh, the, the window into systems-based thinking. A lot of times, you know, pe- there's this great concept of who, not how. You know, who can I hire to do something for me? But the problem there is it's missing the what. If you don't know what is possible, you don't know who to hire, right? The reason why I, I don't need to know how to create something in Adobe Photoshop, but I need to know what is possible. So when I, that's why I love reading uh, tweets. I love looking at, you know, uh, uh, product reviews. I love getting kind of new feature emails. I want to know the things that are possible because when I know what is possible, I know that someone on my team can learn how to do it, or I can learn how to do it, or I can outsource it, or I can hire somebody or whatever. The, the, the issue with who, not how, the issue with constantly saying, oh, I'm the CEO, I'm the visionary, I just need to delegate, I just need someone to read my mind and do this, that, that doesn't work, right? We need to have, you know, biomechanical mastery of the key things that are happening in our world. Now, I'm not asking you to do the work, I'm asking you to understand what needs to be done. Because otherwise, you don't have, we don't have understanding of it. And that's what this is, that's why this is important. That's why this shows you, like, there's a, Um, You know, if you've been around me long enough, you will hear this quote often, which is greatness is in the granularity, right? Greatness is in the granularity. The the granular folks are the ones that went like, for example, if you listen to Elon Musk, you know, he just doesn't say, oh, we're going to do solar. No, he doesn't say, oh, we're going to actually use uh, electricity. He he is so deep in his understanding of how um, how this stuff works. He's so deep in his understanding of, you know, how electricity works and, and how uh, you can put, you know, stuff on solar roofs. And he, he understands how the car works. He understands how you can completely, uh, you know, re- revitalize the, uh, the, the utility system in, in the U.S. Why? Because that is the greatness. The greatness is in the granularity of the thinking. It's not just being the visionary all the time. Like if you, you know, people say things like, oh, I'm the artist. Like, Be the artist, but the artist knows which brush to use. The artist knows which paint works. The artist knows which canvas works. The artist knows um, who who needs to curate his painting. The artist knows which lighting works. The artist knows everything. I'm not asking you to do it, but I'm requiring us to know what needs to be done, right? We got to take ultimate responsibility for all the cool things that we can do. And that's what this process is so cool. And that's what I want to give you. I want to give you the gift of systems-based thinking, right? 
because there is very few people out there that do a really great job. Great CEOs, great entrepreneurs, great business owners have deep domain expertise in understanding how to do it. Yes, when you're online, they may talk about, you know, mindset and philosophy and, and all of that. But the good entrepreneurs know deeply, granularly, exactly how things work. And I want to give you the gift of that systems-based thinking. So we talked about these projects. So number one, we did daily dashboard creation. Number two, we did client onboarding and offboarding. Number three, we did podcast management. Number four, we did a bunch of content creation workflows. Uh, we use Dropbox and Google Drive. Uh, the team uses, we use them both, you know, in sync for various reasons because it's the right, you know, for whatever reason, uh, no judgment here. But we use Zapier to connect them. And we said, hey, once Sharon uploads a piece of content to Dropbox, there is an automatic notification that goes out to a few people. Based on that notification, a bunch of work gets done. Based on that, a bunch of things get done and put back in the folder. Based on that, the team knows what to post. Based on that, Tron gets a notification that it got posted. Like it's a very tight circle. You can you can map it out, but when you have a systems-based thinking of it, now I know that every time I upload a piece of a file, a video into a folder in Dropbox, I know so many things are being done automatically. I don't have to upload it and then send a text to somebody. I don't have to do any of that, right? Because we're letting the systems do what the systems are good at doing, content creation. Um, and last but not least, like a lot of people don't forget that um, Zapier and things like this can be used in daily operations. And I'll give you a very simple example. We do uh, our team does a lot of Zoom calls, client calls, where we record the Zooms, right? Record the, the the files. Well, we have a great automation automation process where, like, we were spending a lot of time downloading the Zoom, saving it to Google Drive, uploading it to Vimeo, renaming the file, taking that file, sending it out to our archives, putting it in a spreadsheet, you know, getting the title, getting it transcribed. Like, we had to do all of that. And we just map that whole process out. And people think that that there's, you know, you have to hire a VA to do that, but you don't. If you think through the process, you can automate like at least 80 to 90% of it. Now, when I'm done hitting stop on a recording on a Zoom, once it's done, like literally everything fires and it happens automatically. And my team loves it because now they become the stewards of the process as opposed to pushing all the buttons. Now I can do, you know, eight Zooms a week and not have my team around or it'd be Christmas and it would work just fine because it again would done be done correctly. Now, if you're going to re reply to this and say, Sharon, let me know how you did all that. No, that's not, that's not the purpose of this podcast, right? The purpose of this podcast is not for me to be your Zapier slave. That's not what I'm trying to do. Uh, and I'm happy to do that for a, you know, a, a obscene amount of money, but I still don't want to do that because that's not the point. The point is this. I want to give you, I, I, I want to, just because we say who, not how, just because you, if you just should not say, I want to delegate everything, because if you don't understand what is possible, if you don't understand what is truly possible, you will never be able to get the who to do that how. And I want to give you the systems-based thinking to think about what is truly possible here. So why am I telling you all this? Well, in the first month, in the first month, we started automating about 100 to 200 tasks a week. Right, we were doing uh, close to 800 tasks a month, and the second month we completely doubled that. We started doing, uh, a, you know, we started getting to a thousand tasks a week, and I was like, "This is amazing!" And in under 90 days, we've already hit 1,500 tasks a week in Zapier, which means we are now, on average, automating 1,440 tasks or more per week, which is the eighth day of the week. <laughs> We literally have manufactured an eighth day of the week in pure automation in under 90 days. Just by thinking about the day-to-day -day things that we do, we're not thinking about like what could be done. We're just thinking about what we already do. And that is the gift I want to give you. The gift I want to give you in all of this is understanding the systems-based approach of thinking. And all of this was possible only because I get so much uh, uh, feedback from our productivity playbook course. So uh, if you're interested in, in uh, getting my, you know, 20, uh, 20 years of secrets on how to get more done and ideas like this and how to do reporting first and uh, how to think through, you know, how you can make a, 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 a great push towards getting more done and, and building the construct of linear time in your favor, you win because that is the only commodity we don't have enough of. The, the reason why we answer, e, you know, emails on the weekends is because 
we know that we will never get the time back because we thought that we want to buy time. The reason why we work harder, the reason why we wake up early, the reason why we stay late, the reason why we want more clients, the reason why uh, we hire help, the reason why we, we, we do all these things is because we want to beat linear time. And if, if you've had a chance to go through my productivity playbook, you'll understand that there's a way to do that. We all need a framework or system so that we can get our best work done. So if you're interested in that, by the way, just go to productivityplaybook.info. I'll link it up in the show notes. You may find that interesting and uh, take the 21 day challenge. And I think you will uh, benefit from that. But more importantly, this is how we automated a whole day worth of work. And I hope you are able to go back and re-listen to this episode. Get, send this to your team. Um, hopefully they'll get some ideas around this because if I in 90 days along with my team can automate a whole day a whole day's worth of stuff using a third-party tool, I think you can do a lot more than that. I hope this uh, episode was helpful to you. And if it was, just shoot me a quick note on Instagram. Tell me it was. Uh, Take a screenshot, share it with a friend. Just share this episode if you think your team or your clients or um, anyone else can benefit from it because I want to give everyone the gift of systems-based thinking because only if you know what is possible, then can you figure out how to get it done. I appreciate you. Thank you for hanging out with me. I'll catch you on the next one. Hey, Sharon, I have a cool gift for you. I took some of my best ideas from the last 20 years and created a five-day MBA. It's quick and action-packed that you can listen to on the go, just like this podcast. And I want to give it to you for free, just as a thank you for listening to the show. No fluff, no gimmicks, just pure actionable ideas for you to use instantly. You can grab it right now at businessschoolshow.com. That's businessschoolshow.com. Dot com.